I started by edge gluing two smaller pieces of oak ply to get a base the size I wanted. I decided to first lay out and attach the miter bar, specifically in reference to the intended placement of the saw curve, which was the seam between the two halves of the base. Then I removed it for the rest of the build. I wanted to round the corners and found that a Red Bull can makes for tracing a perfect 1 inch radius curve. Then I manhandle it at the bandsaw to cut the rounds. The maple block I shaped to replace the broken cast iron one is working out just peachy. Then I cut and glued up the fences. These will meet at a 45 miter on the soccer. I used some assembly squares to ensure the fences are square with each other, and then used a drafting triangle to ensure the fence assembly is 45 degrees to the soccer, which hasn't been cut yet here, but will follow the center joint seam in the base that I am referencing everything off of. A little measuring and some basic geometry check the 45 triangle hypotenuse was perpendicular to the reference line and parallel to the back edge of the base and the short triangle sides were 45 degrees both sides of the reference line. Then I've drilled the pilot holes and countersunk them from underneath. After transferring the holes, I drilled the pilot holes in the fences as well. Then I prepped the battlefield by pre-positioning the screws in the holes anchoring the base down where I could attach the fences with glue and drive the screws from below the work table. Then it was a simple case of putting the fences onto the points of the screws poking through the base and driving the screws home. I continued using the assembly squares and clamps to force square. Once the screws were in place, the clamps and squares were done. I used a laminate trimmer with a quarter inch 45 degree chamfer bit to soften all the edges. The slower speed of the trimmer required me to make two passes minimum to get the size chamfer I wanted, but the small size and light weight made it much more manageable for all the nooks and crannies that I wanted to add a chamfer. Add a little sanding to make it all smooth and pretty and I was happy with how this was turning out. I used a standard layout of two finger holes about 15 inch apart on all my jigs so that they all hang up on a standard pair of hooks in my shop. The holes were cut with a 1 inch Forstner bit and rounded over both sides with a quarter inch bit in the trimmer again. While I was at it, I rounded over the edges of the base all the way around both sides. I reattached the miter bar and it was time to first cut to set the curve. I was going to call that good enough, but I decided to add a little extra safety into the sled and use up some more scrap I have cluttering up my shop. So I cut and face glued five identical strips of ply left over from the waste from the fences, shaped the resulting block and glued it in the crevice of the V of the fences over the curve. Once the blade cuts itself a pocket in that block, it should stay buried in the block after it is no longer cutting at fences. Finally time for the first test wires. Ah, there it is. So the whole build took me about three hours to complete, uh, not counting the two coats of uh, finish that I put on the sled to protect it. Um, and used up a fair amount of scrap uh, out, of, uh, out of my scrap pile, some mixed uh, oak and birch, which is always a good thing, always makes me happy when I'm getting uh, good tools and jigs out of, uh, out of the scrap that's laying around the shop. Now that I've been using the sled for a little while, 
The only thing I would change is I would add uh, a small relief at the base of the fences right here. Uh, perhaps a small 45 chamfer for sawdust relief, saw, for sawdust accumulation, because um, I had a little buildup in that. Other than that, there's uh, really not much I would uh, want any different um, on this sled, except for maybe some perhaps T-tracks with a tape and some flip stops. Maybe I should make another one.